Now, if you own or have ever owned a Toyota MR2 Mark I, aka AW11, you have probably noticed that the aftermarket for this car sucks. There's just not a lot of good stuff out there. It's a good platform, it's a fun platform, it's mid-engined, it has a lot of potential, it's different, it's a quirky, uh, wedgie 80s design, but realistically, it's a rare car, which is why many manufacturers simply choose to ignore it and not make any stuff for it. And when you start modifying an AW11, you quickly notice this obstacle on your way to modification dreams. Uh, if you can't find good stuff, you really can't modify your car. And then we're left with this gray zone of DIYing things or adapting stuff from other platforms and so on and so forth. But all of that doesn't really always work out. Uh, a typical example of the aftermarket lacking for the AW11 are the droplings, a pretty simple but still a very important part. Although the aftermarket is almost non-existent when it comes to AW11 droplings, they are still fortunately available brand new from Toyota dealerships. You can buy brand new OEM droplings for an AW11. Sadly, there's an issue they cost a small fortune. This is an absolutely ridiculous amount of money when you realize uh, you're buying four pieces of very simple, pretty thin steel hardware. But even if you decide to bite the bullet and fork out this ridiculous amount of money for stock OEM droplings, you're gonna realize that they have their limits. And when you start modifying and improving and pushing your suspension further, these limits are reached very, very quickly. The interesting thing is that the AW11 doesn't share dropwing specs with any other vehicle in the Toyota fleet. They are totally unique, which means you can't buy replacement units in the aftermarket. You either have OEM or something fancy in the aftermarket, which again doesn't really exist and might be very hard to procure depending on where you live. On planet Earth. When I was rebuilding my suspension, I decided not to fork out an obscene amount of money for the OEM units and I decided to build my own. So I bought some generic RAV4 Toyota drop wings, I cut them up, made a thread, and created these horrible, ugly Frankensteins. And although they serve their purpose, there's some major drawbacks to them. Now, the first and biggest drawback was that these things actually damaged my chassis. They damaged it because this section of the stock AW11 droplings is very thin. And finding a different dropwing on the market that shares this thickness is almost impossible. So whatever you find to modify is likely going to rub against your chassis. The other issue is adjustability or lack thereof. To adjust my DIY droplings, I have to remove them from the car and that of course is a major hassle, so I ended up never adjusting them, which resulted in my anti row bars not being in the ideal position. But even if you decide to not build some hideous DIY thing and instead fork out the cash for the OEM droplings, you are still going to run some pretty serious issues when you start upgrading the suspension on your AW11. If you upgrade your sway bars to thicker, beefier aftermarket sway bars, you have a good chance of bending the OEM droplings. Because aftermarket sway bars are thicker, beefier, stronger, they generate more leverage onto the droplink and after some enthusiastic or track driving, you're likely going to end up with overpriced bent droplings. The other issue is a total lack of adjustability. My ugly DIY droplings can at least be adjusted in theory. The OEM droplings cannot be adjusted in any way, which means you're basically wasting the potential of an aftermarket sway bar. Aftermarket sway bars have different install points and to, to use the different install points, you need to be able to change the length of your droplink because you can't do this you're again wasting the potential of an aftermarket sway bar. But even if you keep the stock OEM sway bars, it's still a good idea to have some adjustability because changing the angle of the sway bar can positively influence your handling in different driving scenarios on different tracks and in different uh, types of events or racing or whatever you wanna do with an AW11. So this means that we're pretty much stuck, right? When it comes to AW11 droplets. Well. We're stuck no more. Thanks to fellow AW11 enthusiast and a good friend and an awesome car guy, Rage Racing, the AW11 dropwing problem has now been officially solved. Because Rage Racing has built 
these beauties. And today we're going to review them, we're going to install them onto my AW11 and we're going to give them a test drive. Now when you hold these things in your hand, they really give you a feeling of confidence. They feel very beefy, very sturdy, nice and heavy, and you simply have the feeling that it's pretty impossible to bend or, or you know, stretch these or damage them in any sort of way, no matter how insane of a driver you are and on what kind of track you drive an AW11. And when you visually compare them to the OEM drop links or even any of the few aftermarket options available, you can see that these drop links simply take things a step further. Now the center section of this drop link is steel, which is different to some aftermarket options which use weaker materials like aluminum for example. Now the center section has been galvanized to protect it from rust and then powder coated to protect it even more. We can see that the ends have been upgraded with some very strong, very beefy rose joints that feature a bronze bushing. That means a very nice, very accurate and precise transfer of loads and very smooth and precise movement of the drop link during driving and cornering. The bolts inside the rose bushings are of a very high grade and feature some pretty absurd tensile strength, which means the chances of bending or stretching or breaking these bolts is pretty much zero, no matter how or where you drive. But there's more. The bolts actually, as you can see, feature a machined center section, which has a very tight snug fit with the rose joint. This means there's no play and it further enforces a smooth movement, but more importantly it, it ensures a ideal optimal transfer of loads through the drop link. Because the forces aren't transferred onto a threaded section of bolt, but instead of a flat section of metal, this ensures proper load bearing and load transfer. Another really important thing is that one side is left hand threaded and the other one is right hand threaded, which means that when you install these drop links, you can easily adjust their length by simply using a wrench and turning the center section, which means you can adjust them without removing them, unlike my hideous DIY junk. On top of all of this, they are very visually pleasing. When you install these things on your car, they simply give off an impression of a pretty serious suspension and a car that can do amazing things in the corners. So when it comes to how they feel and how they look, I have to say that I am very, very impressed, especially considering that Rage Racing isn't some sort of big name brand. He's an enthusiast, an enthusiast who decided to say, you know what, I'm sick of not having a good aftermarket option and unlike D4A, I'm gonna build junk, I'm actually gonna build something very, very serious and indeed, this is a very serious part. So, they look good, they feel good, now let's see how they perform on the car. So the install is finished, old stuff out, new stuff in on all four corners of the car. When it comes to the install, it was actually easier to install the Rage Racing drop links than any OEM type drop link, because in the Rage Racing ones you can control the bolt tightening from both sides of the rose joint, it makes the install quite a bit faster and quite a bit easier. So the install is finished, now let's fire up the MR2 and take it for a drive. Okay guys, so driving impressions. Well, of course, the first thing I'm noticing is that there's no nasty clunking sounds. This now sounds like a modern car over potholes. You can't hear anything. With my horrible DIY drop links before, when I would go over even the smallest of potholes, sometimes I could hear this very annoying clunking sound. Okay, we're in a tunnel. We know what we gotta do in a tunnel. Gone, 
and I'm very happy about that. When it comes to the handling, it's actually a mixed bag and the situation got pretty interesting. In the back, I definitely managed to improve handling in the rear end. The shorter distance of the drop points, the reduced angle of the rear sway bar is definitely doing good things for my AW11. The rear end now feels more organic, it feels rock solid. Before, it used to step out the rear end sometimes, do a tiny little drift, and all it was fun, and I kind of mastered the skill of doing tiny little drifts with the rear end of the MR2. Um, it was a tiny bit unsafe because sometimes, especially when the road was wet, the rear end would step out even when I didn't want that to happen. Right now, it, it definitely feels better, more organic, it feels, it feels more planted. So I'm definitely liking what I did uh, with the new setting in the back. When it comes to the front, I definitely made things worse, actually a lot worse. The shorter drop links in the front and the reduced angle of the sway bar in the front isn't doing good things in my case. And I'm definitely going to be changing that setting. The good news is that with the Rage Racing drop links, I can do that now very, very easily. I just have to go back to my garage, remove my two front wheels, and it's gonna take me like two minutes to reduce the length of the front drop links. Okay, so there's some cops on the road now. Be patient. I gotta stop talking. And they didn't pull me over. This happened like once every million times I go past a bunch of cops. So yeah, in the front things are worse. I have a lot of bump steer in the front now. Uh, even tiny little road imperfections move the steering wheel and it feels very unsafe. It's actually robbing me uh, of a lot of confidence and the steering wheel is a lot lighter now, actually too light. So I'm definitely not enjoying the new setting in the front and I will be changing it. But the good thing is that the, the, the rage racing drop links actually have a very large range of adjustment. I checked it. They're, they're, the difference between their shortest and their longest length is pretty significant and I think they can suit all kinds of suspensions. That being said, they are shorter overall, of course, than the OEM drop links. And I think right now they're a tiny bit more biased towards lowered suspensions, maybe even coilovers. I think they might be a tiny bit too short for a fully stock suspension, but who has a fully stock suspension on a AW11 in 2020? I don't think anybody has that. Uh, so, uh, but for my suspension, which is yellow, uh, Coney shocks, shock inserts, and iBox springs, I think there is definitely more than enough range of adjustment, and I think I'll be able to dial in just the perfect amount of drop point length in the front. So overall, I have to say that this is definitely a really good product. It has open, opened a new thing for me. I can now tune my suspension in ways I didn't, didn't, I couldn't before. And I'm actually very surprised by how much the drop point, uh, drop point length actually influences handling. I didn't expect this much of a difference, but there's definitely a difference. And I think I'll be dialing in the length of the front somewhere between what I had before and what I have now, because the lighter steering wheel is a tiny bit more direct and the car does turn in a bit more uh, a bit more quickly. And I do like that, but I don't want it this light. And I can experiment easily and dial in just the perfect amount of drop point length, which is definitely a very nice thing. Uh, also, as I already said, the install was easy and the product feels rock solid overall, really, really well made. And I think even a, a company with like a bunch of employees and engineers and whatever wouldn't make anything that was significantly better than this and actually probably couldn't make anything that was significantly better than this. So overall, I, I, I'm, I'm very, very happy with this. Very, very impressed with this. Big, big thumb, thumbs up for, for Rage Racing. Now, uh, when it comes to the drop links, if you want to find out more about them, of course, there's a link to Rage Racing in the description. So definitely, definitely check it out. So yeah, I guess that's pretty much it for today. I'm, I'm a happy camper. Uh, I have new, new fun stuff to do with my AW11. And now I'm gonna enjoy the road a bit more. And I'll be seeing you soon with more fun and useful stuff on the D4A channel. D4A out. What, uh, did, you, did you notice my tacky steering wheel? Like ultra 80s tacky steering wheel? Well, if you, if you remember the first video, the only other video where the steering wheel was featured, that you have definitely been with this channel for a very long time and I love you very, very much.
Okay, on that note, D48, out.